crossing in the electric fence that separates Mozambique and South Africa is closed. For many years, this tunnel linked the Malumbo people, divided by the border. Tonight on Special Assignment, we bring you the human drama of a clan once more torn apart. In 1987, an electric fence was built between Mozambique and South Africa. It ran right through the land of the Mlambu people, creating an impenetrable barrier and splitting the clan in two. The Defence Force came up with a plan to counter the bad press this caused. It built a tunnel in the village of Mbuzini to allow families to visit one another across the notorious Norex line. At the end of last year, after much bureaucratic bungling, the tunnel was closed. Like uh, we are standing here, uh, that side is called Swaziland. As you see this boundary, it's Swaziland that side, and uh, it's uh, the Republic this side, it's uh, Mozambique that side, you see. But uh, the whole area was just divided, you know, into three parts. Dividing, you know, people of that land. This man is a Bevula. Bevula Masilela is a headman in that side of the boundary in Swaziland. This one is Petros Masalela. So it's from the Royal Crawl in Mozambique. And this one is uh, Mundawe. Mundawe Samuel Matalet. We call him Sicha Semnigat. And I'm their leader. And they are my subjects. All these people are Mlambo people. And uh, it's sad what is happening to them. Little <laughs> Before the Mbuzini Tunnel was opened in 1987, there was a series of negotiations between the South African Defence Force, the Mozambican police and the Mlambo people. There were meetings that took place like that, but I can remember the last meeting that took place where the official authority was given for the gate to open. General Malan, the then Minister of Defence, uh, came down and he flew with helicopter to the border and we, the Defence Force officials, had to pitch tents and a meeting was set up on the border itself. And the official go-ahead was given that morning. <laughs> The whole thing was to uh, seek an African solution for an African problem. The communities living on either side of the border didn't have regard for a, for a first world passport control system. And we thought that if we had a more relaxed system, that people could move uh, at random to and fro, but still have a form of control. That was the solution we were looking for. Even taking into account that uh, at the time, our relationship with Mozambique, although there was liaison, it was not very relaxed at that point in time. But uh, it just, uh, the solution that was accepted went to show that they also saw that it was necessary to have a, a point where people could cross.
nós, nós sentimos um bocadinho estranho, porque é, aquele posto foi um acordo entre dois países para a sua abertura. Mas quando os nossos amigos sul-africanos entenderam que deviam fechar, por qual motivo, não sabemos, não vieram nos comunicar. E nós tivemos um encontro com o comandante de Macadâmia. Nós perguntamos, disse que não sabia, só apenas recebeu ordens de, de pretória para que se fechasse o posto. E nós dissemos a ele, uma vez que o posto à sua abertura foi um acordo entre dois países, se existem problemas, também deviam ser postos na mesa para, para se estudar, talvez outros métodos, o que é que podemos fazer para ultrapassarmos esses problemas. Mas nós ficamos sem saber os porquês. At the beginning of this year, through my operational channel, I was uh, instructed to close the tunnel because I don't have the mandate to run the tunnel. And, that, and then I closed it. The closure of the tunnel brought the military, myself, into a bad light because the, the people from Mumbuzini said, but uh, we had this for many years. We had it in the previous dispensation. Why do you come now with a democratized uh, uh, country now you all of a sudden close it. Me nagan ukbuagwam Bonas Lohul Mendelo Sinai Sos Bandu Laga Kulu Una Hul Mendelo Begako. Without the Mbuzini tunnel, the alternative route is long and arduous. A South African wanting to visit his relatives a few kilometers away in Mozambique must now travel to Nelspreit to obtain a passport and visa before making the long journey through the Mananga border gate into Swaziland and then finally crossing again at Namahache into Mozambique. Bem do nada se partiu, conseguiu fazer pulada, construiu castelos e empelos... Any Mozambican Mlambo wanting to visit his king must first travel to Maputo where a South African visa will cost him 300 rand. Then he must return to Namahache and cross through Swaziland before finally meeting up with his king in Mbuzini. Mas tirar, arranjar 300 rands e ir comprar visa no Maputo para ir a 5 metros, a 10 metros, isso não é possível. Isso obriga que as pessoas violem. E assim as pessoas podem usar essa capa que vai para lá, como não tem controle, levar outras coisas. The Mlambo people have their sacred sites scattered throughout South Africa, Swaziland and Mozambique. This one is in Mozambique. Whenever we speak with our ancestors, we come here to speak. And coming from South Africa and Swaziland, the peoples of the Royal Crown, and meeting us here, they come to speak with our ancestors. Our king is there. We are here. We want to visit the king. The king asks us to call us to be with him there, but we, we, can, we find no other way. In terms of cultural activities, we are not differing from Swaziland. And also, the nearby people from Mozambique, those who are nearby the, the, the fence, they also wear as we are wearing the traditional, in our traditional way. So we are not differing from them. The only difference is the, the, the question of politics. But the cultural one, then there's no difference. The people from that royal crown in Swaziland, they, fought, they fetch water here in the Republic of South Africa. Yeah, and uh, there is no alternative, no one. And uh, they, since before the insertion of this boundary, this river has been here, it has been used by these people. If people will come from Swaziland and get pension here in South Africa, you know, it affects the government, not necessarily our culture, maybe as Mlambo people, but it affects the South African government, the whole government. 
not us as a tribe. It's just like there, though you are my brother, you see. And then I am married and you are also married. And then you have the responsibility to make sure that you support your children. I support my children. Though we, we practice the same culture. You know, that, that, that's why I'm saying that it becomes a political question, not necessarily a mere cultural question. You see, one other thing is we have a very bad tension with our local politicians. Those uh, local, these uh, local politicians, you know, sometimes they do things, you know, the other, the other way that we expect of them. It is pension day in Mbuzini. Very few villages have jobs. And this is the only source of income for many people here. At least they receive pensions. In Mozambique and Swaziland, the elderly do not receive any money at all. For them, this market is their only source of income. With the Mbuzini tunnel closed, the electric fence is impenetrable. But it does end, and one can travel around it. The fence dividing South Africa and Swaziland is small and easy to cross. But it is illegal, and one must risk being robbed or caught by the soldiers who patrol it. On the Swaziland uh, border, we don't have much uh, uh, illegal Swazis uh, coming into, into South Africa. But yes, they do come in to purchase, etc. as well. Uh, uh, to look after that is, uh, I don't have the manpower, and it is difficult to catch a person because it's family. He comes in and he buys something on the market and he goes back. So there's not, in actual fact, an issue in apprehending them. Mrs. Ngobeni is a Mozambican. She used to cross easily at the tunnel to sell her bread on pension day. Now she is forced to make the long trek through Swaziland with her heavy load. At least this time, she hasn't been robbed. Mara, we are going to be able to get a visa. We are going to be able to get a visa. We are going to be able to get a visa. We are going to be able to get a visa. We are going to be able to get a visa. We are going to be able Later that day, we passed Mrs. Ngobeni on our way back to the market. She had been arrested by the South African soldiers. The Mbuzini tunnel was closed at the end of last year by the Defence Force, who discovered that they did not have the legal mandate to operate it. According to South African law, the function of operating a border post falls under home affairs. We tend to blame one another. This one is doing that, that one is doing that. And uh, eventually the South African Defence Force said, this is not our responsibility. Will you, as Home Affairs, take over the responsibilities? Then we said, we don't have the infrastructure. And uh, they said, also, it's not our responsibility, and we don't have the infrastructure. And what could be the solution? 
So the solution was that <coughs> it be closed down. If they open the tunnel and they tell me, listen here, you must look after the tunnel, you've got the mandate and it comes through my channels, I think it's easy to look after the tunnel because you, use, you, you only use two people at the, at the shift. The reason why the South African Defence Force also closed down that was due to the reduction of their personnel, that they don't have enough personnel to run the, 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 that uh, tunnel. I've never heard them say, we are closing because people are smuggling arms, uh, people are smuggling drugs, uh, people are doing this and this. I've never heard them say that. And there was a complaint that uh, there are people that are bringing in goods or taking goods into Mozambique. There was a concern from one of our stakeholders. To say that the Muzini tunnel was used as the main smuggle route, um, I don't think that is very true. Uh, out of an objective point of view, you can smuggle through Swaziland much easier. The chief of the area was also approached to inform him that, look, due to the problems that we encounter with the infrastructure, with the abuse, we intend now closing down the informal crossing. But instead of simplifying the job of policing the borders, the closure of the Mbuzini Tunnel has only made it more difficult. The problem when we close the tunnel is that the people uh, made use of the Swaziland border and they cross the fence illegally because we, we never had cr uh, crosses at the bottom part of the fence, people coming into the country. And on a daily basis, we catch illegal immigrants, on a daily basis. If you catch them, you ask them, what are you coming to do here? Normally, it's an answer of, uh, we're coming in for work. That's a most, that's a popular answer. She came from the other side to, to look for the nearest hospital because she says she's, she's, she's sick. Mm. She came over the other side with her brother, but the brother's got all the natural papers she hasn't got. Mm -hmm. He's uh, actually telling me now when he started to uh, work in Joburg, since 1976. He requested, I think there was a death in his family or something, requested to go into Mozambique, no problem. He went there, but the family rituals, were, uh, funerals and things, he was held up so long that the 13th of July came and that's expiry date of his uh, visa. So now when he wants to come back, he's got no money, he never got paid. They don't understand down there, so he chose the fence route. My personal opinion, that's, that's, that's difficult. But if you listen to the stories that these people tell you, you would be tempted to let them stay, but government requires us to on the way back to the police station in Gomatic World, the Mamba stopped several times to pick up more Mozambicans. They have also been caught crossing the fence. On the day we filmed in the area, 87 people were caught crossing the 60-kilometer fence between Gomatibuert and Swaziland. This is only a fraction of the total number of people who crossed into South Africa that day. The next day, 1,020 people were repatriated to Mozambique. It's impossible. Uh, 
to stop people. You must really have the manpower and the resources. Even with the Berlin Wall, it was impossible to stop people. And we don't have a, a hundreds of what they have done there. So if you look at solutions on a border area or with illegals, then the solution is not in my hands with military forces. It is a question of, of socio-economic development. <laughs> Back at the tribal court in Mbuzeni, these South African boys have been arrested for robbing Mozambican women, who are easy targets as they cross the fence illegally. The king asks one of them how he could tell who is Mozambican. He says, it is the war. <laughs> it goes with your experience, in fact. It, it's not that maybe Mozambicans are, have got a particular way of walking, but the way a person walks, you know, if you look at him, then you say, this one is not a South African. The black troops, um, they call it the sixth sense. They know and they sense that this person is not from Mozambique. You can obviously tell Mozambican features. It's far skin angry looking. Maybe to you, as a person that's not working with uh, these uh, different uh, uh, nations, it will be difficult for you to detect. The, the mark here, is, then it becomes easier for one to identify whether you are from South Africa or from um, Mozambique by this mark. It's, yeah, it's, it's on the arm here. Yeah. Normally with us uh, in the old days, it was on the, the shoulder. Yeah, well, it depends uh, on their historical background, individually. You can have those that have both. You can have those that have one. You can have those that was born in his mother's family at home, not in a clinic, you see. And then uh, that person might not be having any mark. You see, yeah, I mean, it's a question of understanding one's background. The differences of the language, because they speak, each and every part of Mozambique people, they speak Shangana and Ronga and other, and other languages. Because the, the boundary, that's why he says it, that's Mozambican. But he's not Mozambican, the Swazi and the Lomahajar are different. It's really bad when you have people, you know, who used to be one and who are one in heart and blood, they are made to be divided, you know, by this practice. I wish my people to be united. How? Nobody knows. But I just want my people to be united. again next week for another special assignment and if you have any comments or suggestions you can email us at truth at sabc.co.za